Hey everybody, this is Mr. Claus and this is a quick video about locating earthquakes when you're given some PNS wave data. Now this is a really important skill uh, for your final exam and for the rest of the year so you have to have this down pat. I'm going to break it into three steps. Uh, first one is subtracting time. You're going to get a P and an S wave time. You need to be able to subtract those to get a PS wave difference. Then that difference for step two, you're going to convert to an earthquake distance using the earthquake slide. And then finally, you're going to have three distances from three different earthquakes and use those to find the exact location of the earthquake. That's all. So the first step that we're going to take is we're going to take any earthquake that it's given to us where we have both a P wave arrival time and an S wave arrival time given to us and we're going to subtract those arrival times to get a PS time difference. So for this particular problem, we have St. John's and San Diego that were given a P and an S wave arrival time. Let's do St. John's first. We're going to write it out as the St. John's P wave arrival time as 06 38.50 and the S wave arrival time is 06.45.50. You'll notice that the S wave arrival time goes on top. That's because it's always going to be a bigger number and we want bigger numbers on the top. Remember that the S wave travels slower. That's why it arrives later. It's a bigger number. Now we're going to subtract going from seconds to minutes to to hours. As we subtract, it's pretty easy on seconds. We got 50 minus 50 gives me 0, 0. We got 45 minus 38 gives me 0, 7. And 0, 06 minus 0, 06 gives me 0, 0. So for my St. John's P S wave time difference, I have 0 hours, 7 minutes and zero seconds. Let's do the same thing for San Diego, which is going to be a little bit tougher. Now on the top for San Diego, I'm going to write my S wave number, which is 063600 hours, minutes, seconds. And my P wave arrival time is 063320. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to subtract the seconds first, but I have a problem. I can't subtract 0 minus 20, so I need to borrow a minute. I'm going to cross out 36. I'm going to make that 35. And I'm going to write that minute over here, but I need to write it as 60 seconds because we're in the seconds column. I'm going to cross out the 0, 0. Write 60. Then I get 60 minus 20. It gives me 40. My 35 minus 33 gives me 0, 2 and my 6 minus 6 gives me 0, 0. So for San Diego, my PS wave time difference is 0, 0, 0, 2, and 40 seconds. So 2 minutes and 40 seconds. That's all for step 1. Step 2 is coming up next. So here I am with step 2. We have our PS time differences already calculated as 7 minutes for St. John's for the St. John's Seismograph Station and as 2 minutes and 40 seconds for the San Diego Seismograph Station. I need to take those PS time differences and change them to how far away did the earthquake happen or what is the distance to the epicenter. We're going to use a little move called the earthquake slide to do that. So let's do St. John's first. The PS time difference is seven minutes. So I'm gonna go to ESRT page 11, and with some scrap paper, I'm gonna make a mark at zero minutes and at seven minutes, which represents that time difference. Now is when we do the earthquake slide. I take the, the scrap paper that I had, and I slide it up, until those marks match. I like to slide it where I keep the bottom mark on the bottom line. And as I slide it up, I make sure I keep it straight up and down. And I see that when I get to here, they match up. Now as I take that part where they match it up and I trace it down, so I'm moving down this way, 
and I have my earthquake distance as 5,400 kilometers away. So we're going to go to 5,400 kilometers for St. John's. Now let's do San Diego, where I have a time difference of 2 minutes and 40 seconds. I'm going to take a scrap paper again. I'm going to make a mark at 0 and at 2 minutes and 40 seconds. And I'm going to do the same thing. Do my earthquake slide. I'm going to move it up, move it up until I get the lines to match up. And they match up right about here. And if I trace that down, I get my earthquake epicenter as 1,600 kilometers away. So we'll go 1,600. Now here's the last step. Occasionally you will get one where they don't give you the P and the S wave arrival time, they give you the distance. So instead of taking the PS time difference and converting that to a distance, we need to do the opposite. We need to convert this 2,700 kilometers to how far apart were the P and S wave times. Well, I'm just going to take that earthquake slide and do it in reverse, the reverse quake slide. So that 2,700 kilometers right here, I'm going to find 2,700 kilometers with my scrap paper. And I have it right about here. And I'm going to make a mark on the P and the S wave line. And when I bring that P and the S wave line down, I see that it matches up to four minutes. So for Savannah, because I know the distance to the epicenter is 2,700, I know the PS wave time difference by doing the reverse quake slide as 0, 04 minutes. Well, they give me the P wave arrival time. So I can find out the S wave arrival time because I know that they're four minutes apart and I know that the S wave always arrives second. So if I take that 63540 and add four minutes onto it, I would get 063940. Now I have my chart completely filled out. It's time for step three, which is actually locating the earthquake. So finally we move on to step three. At this point you've already calculated distance to the epicenter for three different stations. We know that this earthquake happened 5,400 kilometers away from St. John's, 1,600 kilometers away from San Diego, and 2,700 kilometers away from Savannah. You're going to be given a map which shows where those cities are and a few extras. Uh, so we have St. John's here, we have San Diego right here, and we have Savannah here. So let's take our information for St. John's first. If you remember, we said that this earthquake happened 5,400 kilometers away from St. John's. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my drawing compass, and I'm going to use the scale provided on the map. I'm going to set it. First I'll put the bullseye on the zero, and then I'm going to move until I get one of the holes lined up with 5,400 kilometers, which is right here. And I can lock it in place. So now I can draw a circle with a diameter, excuse me, a radius on this map of 5,400 kilometers around St. John's. Now I'm going to take the bullseye of the compass and I'm going to put it directly in. So St. John's is right in the middle of that. And then I'm going to draw my circle. It doesn't matter if it runs off the page, that's just fine. Just go ahead and run it off the page. So what we know is that everywhere on this circle is 5,400 kilometers away from St. John's. So somewhere on this circle the earthquake happened. We don't know where yet. That's where the other two stations come in. Next I'm going to make my circle for San Diego. San Diego was 1,600 kilometers away from the epicenter of the earthquake. So I'm going to do the same thing where I take my drawing compass and I'm going to move it. So now I'm drawing a circle with a radius 
of 1,600 kilometers right here. Now remember that if you line up the first hole on your drawing compass, you should draw your circle with the first hole. That's a common mistake to line up with the first hole and then do your drawing with the second hole. But we're lining 1600 right up here with the first hole, so we're gonna draw our circle centered around San Diego. with a first hole. So we now know, we now know this earthquake happened on this circle and also on this circle. So it could have happened in two different places. It could have happened right here or it could have happened right here. And I'm still not sure yet, so I need to draw one more circle. And that circle is, has a radius of 2,700 around Savannah, Georgia. So I'm gonna go back to my map once more, I'm going to set my compass to draw with a radius of 2,700, which should be right about here. So there's 2,700, and I'm going to make that circle around Savannah, Georgia. So now I've located the epicenter of the earthquake. It's where all three circles are touching, right here. Or at least they're getting close to touching because remember that there's a little bit of wiggle room on the, doing the earthquake slide. I'm gonna make a big X right there for that is where my earthquake happened. And then you are all set. Good luck.